I've noticed that oftentimes when an archetype or theme gets new cards that don't necessarily fit in with the way the deck is currently played, the discussion surrounding these cards immediately shifts to the notion that they are bad, right? And this is, I think, a, an important point for distinction in how we talk about this. Because it's not that they are bad in this particular build. It's not that they are you know, bad within a particular context. It's that the cards in general are bad. And in this particular instance, one thing I just find really, really whack, something I just genuinely do not comprehend is new to here in a vacuum is a, is a pretty solid card, right? But I saw the argument that even if it did not have the machine lock, it would be a bad card. So for anyone who's not familiar with Drytron, right? Drytron has a spell that can special summon a Drytron out of deck. This is usually used currently to put a name that you want to have access to on board so you can sack it off, right, for a different name or even potentially for a ritual summon. And then you can activate that effect in the grave to special summon it back because it also will search you something. It'll search you your, in the case of Zeta, ritual spell, and in the case of Alpha, ritual monster, right? They don't innately activate when summoned. This does. So this means if you only have the field spell in hand, you can activate the field spell, search Nova, activate Nova, summon this, and then get your name. It becomes a situation where both the field spell and Nova are one card combos. Because this card can also special summon itself back from the grave. Allowing you to overlay for Mubay to Fafnir, and that'll prevent it from banishing itself. Right? Like, this card at a baseline presents such good value, and it's like, if your field spell sticks, it can special summon itself, because you don't specifically need a Drytron monster on board. It just needs a Drytron card to special summon itself. Beyond that, if you're using the Machine Angels as a package, right, you can still Ben 10 into Ben 10 into Natasha. You can Ben 10 into Ben 10 into Ben 10 into Natasha. And sure, you won't be able to summon any of them, right? But you still have the follow-up that on the next turn, if you need to, you can choose not to activate this card's effect, right? Either of them. So that would mean you're also not summoning it off of Gamma, because Gamma doesn't negate. Gamma does not negate, by the way. So if you summon this off of Gamma, you can get the search like that. Um, but... You can choose to route differently so that you can use the board breaking um, utility that Natasha presents. I just, I just don't get it, dude. Like, yes, currently Drytron is on that turn skipped bullshit, but you don't have to play the deck on that particular axis. And you know, I haven't played Drytron super consistently in the past year because there's just been other decks that I've wanted to play. And, you know, I, as I think I've said multiple times, I play a bunch of TCGs. I, I, I have a bunch of shit that I want to play. I, even with Yu-Gi-Oh, I am building stuff all the time. I'm, you know, readjusting decks and whatnot. But what I did do with Drytron quite some time ago, I, I run a More Factor Paint. It, it's a pretty commonly run card. But I also run Draconids. I have a number of instances where my end board is like, maybe another rank one but mu beta fafnir with one material and then draconitz because mu beta is a spell trap negate draconitz can't be targeted by monster effects right and it also represents removal i i don't know dude like i think drytron for a while now has had the capability to operate on a different axis than it most commonly does this helps you lean further into that but this like the discussion surrounding this just comes like it brings me back to the discussion surrounding salmon great when it got its support revealed for soul burning volcano i forget what the ocg name of the set was it might have been the same thing but salmon great of fire got revealed and people were insisting that it was terrible because it locked but you look at salad now you look at salad a few months ago and it's 
still running Thalman Grid of Fire because the card is good. And the thing is, hey, you can actually still do the access code line. You just need to not use Salaman Grid of Fire. But if you do use Salaman Grid of Fire, you have access to a completely different OTK line using Violet Chimera. Now, I wasn't sure what the exact Violet Chimera line was going to be at the time we got the cards revealed because I, I hadn't played Salad in forever. But I did know that since the last time that I did, Salad had gotten a number of new tools. We had Proxy F Magician, which is fire, so we can do the fusion like that, right? We don't even need to find the spell. And then on top of that, Raging Phoenix being a good card meant that Will is better as well, because yo, look at that. You have a Link 4, you can bring back 4 bodies. Like, there were so many little nuances that, like, during the reveals of Salmon Great, like, I'm not, like, a massive Salmon Great fan or anything like that. I don't, I mean, I, I do have the cards now because somebody just gave me a core. But it wasn't anything that I was particularly fiending for. But I still sat there, I read over the cards, and I was like, oh, hey, you have these options. And presenting that, I, I had people pop off on me because they're like, yo, these cards are dog shit. You don't know what you're talking about. I was just trying to engage in a conversation, you know. I was trying to engage in some discussion and I presented some options that I thought were worth exploring and clearly they ended up being worth exploring because look at the variants in salad decks now. And I just don't get it, you know, like people will be extremely unwilling to engage with the idea that a deck can operate in a different way. You even had this happen with Synchron where like for the longest time, like, you know, if, if you've been around for a hot minute Synchron has been on the junk doppel thing since like 2010, maybe 2009. I don't even remember, bro. But going into Dawn of Majesty, even though I saw people really excited for the new cards, there was this hesitation. They were very reluctant to leave behind the junk doppel stuff and maybe play the deck on a bit of a different axis. And it's kind of funny, like the, the Bestials helped with this a little bit because you had, uh, you know, easy level combinations you get into but genuinely there were so many instances i saw people that were just extremely remiss to try building the deck in a different way that would better accommodate the new cards because junk doppel was just what you did it was just how you played the deck which funnily enough it kind of goes into mbt's recent video about ash blossom right like we we just need to reevaluate our choices even with my Exosister thing. Do I know what the common deck building convention for Exosister is? Yes. Do I understand why people go for that? Yes. And that's also part of the reason why I'm like, you know what? I think it's worthwhile to deviate away from that in this current format. Are my ratios the objectively correct ones? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I know it has worked for me and I know what my reasoning behind running it is. And you're free to sit here and have a conversation with me and tell me why you agree or disagree with my deck building decisions. You're free to tell me why you think it isn't going to work or what issues it has. And, you know, maybe you'll be right. Maybe you'll bring up something that is a valid consideration and I'll sit here and I'll think about it. I'll sit here and I'll ask you about it. We'll have a back and forth and maybe we'll come to some kind of solution. Maybe we won't. But at least there was that willingness to engage with the idea, right, that, okay, maybe this could be done differently. And I, I just want to end this off by saying this is by no means just a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. I see this in so many different games I play, not just like TCGs either. Like, I've seen this in terms of builds for MMOs. I've seen this for RPGs that don't even get updates, right? Like, there would be an unwillingness to even engage with the idea that a different build could be viable because oh hey this one has to be optimal and sometimes we'll, we'll come to find out like not not even me but like communities right we'll come to find out that oh hey this other thing that we just chose not to engage with because we were convinced it wasn't good it actually was pretty good this whole time 